Welcome to Hello Me, It's Me, Vulnerable AF, a podcast hosted by Nikki D. Lovely. That's really just her diary disguised as a podcast, but who cares? You're here for it. Join in as she addresses her self-reflections on life, love, and dating, and gives us all the tea by being more vulnerable than she ever has with herself and the world. So let's get started in today's episode with Nikki D. Lovely, already in progress. Hey, so I was actually outside today, just a couple of minutes ago, and I just took a moment to like look outside and take a deep breath. And I just exhaled. <laughs> Finally, this week has been so, not week, this month has been so draining for me. I um, recently was cut out of someone's life, but then I can't, I can't say that I was cut out because I actually initiated the cutting. But let's say I lost someone out of my life that I truly cared about. I'm not even going to lie there. I truly cared about this person. And I think what hurts the most when you're being cut out of someone's life who you truly care about is that you have no control over that part. And me kind of being a control freak my whole life and having to always be in control. I think I was going to get emotional here, but here I go. Um, what I've learned since moving to Louisiana and being in this really, I'm not going to say really small town because this is not a small town. I live in a small city, but being in this, actually, no, I'm not, wait, I'm not lying. I actually do technically live in a small town. So me living in this small town outside of the city, I live like in like the, on these county lines. In this small little town that I had never even heard of before I moved here. But being out here has made me realize how little I can control. Or should be trying to control when it comes to my life. Now I'm not talking about, you know, being in charge of my bills and all that stuff. I think that part, you know, everybody gets that. That's part of an adult life. But for me, I was trying to control things that I really couldn't. There was a story that I always share with my friends about this time me and my brother got onto this Ferris wheel and it was one of those Ferris wheels that when you're, it's like a cage and it rocks back and forth, but you can control how much you rock or so we thought if you hold the um, lever that's in the middle, it's like this big circle in the middle. So we were the first people to get on, which meant that as everyone was going, getting on, we were slowly, you know, just creeping up, 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 up and around before the ride even started, which was even scarier because we were in there and we're watching and we're looking down and the thing is moving and we're like, oh no, oh no. And I had this bright idea that if we hold the thing in the middle, that we wouldn't move at all. So my brother and I are just sitting there holding it, holding it, holding it. And as it's going up and around, it's staying stagnant. It's staying still. So it's going up. We're going up like everyone else, but we're stagnant in that moment um, because we're trying to hold it still. Now, the cage is meant to move. (laughs) If you you think about the way it was designed, it was meant to move so that when you go up, You're not like holding on and potentially like falling over in the cage. It's meant to swing. It's meant to have some leeway. But nevertheless, we held on tight till we got up to that top and we were like, you know what? We can't do this anymore. We have to let it go. And at that time when we let it go, it was like this big swing because we had held it so long that when we let it go, the swing was huge. The release was big and it scared us even more. And I say all that to say that me moving to this small town has kind of been my big release. Before I thought I had to have everything together, you know? I thought I always had to have everything together and and 
having everything together in my life meant in my mind meant that I needed to be in control of things. And the funny part about that is <laughs> what you think you know, what you think you know with your little bitty brain at 25 or 30 or 35 even that you can be in control of something and you this is your first time in this space so what are you really kind of trying to control and how are you kind of control it why do you think that you know better than just allowing the universe or God if you will to take you wherever it is you need to go and so I had saved up it took me years to do that I stayed at my parents house for whew, a long time before I got myself mentally right and was like, you know what, Nikki, we're going to save money. We're going to do this. We're going to get out of here. We're going to set ourselves up to the point where we're going to be good. And the funny part is I came out here last year and I gave myself just a year of relaxation, just a year of literally if I didn't want to do anything financially, I did not have to. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to sell anything. I didn't have to like push myself out there to do things like I'm the type of person who wants to do things anyway but I didn't have to and even that in itself is a blessing because there's not a lot of people who can say that they are even in that position or have been in that position right so to be able to say that I knew I was blessed I knew I was in a good position I knew I was like in a feeling of like this is something new for you and you can finally relax and you can finally have peace and I prayed so much in that season I prayed so much last year and God was like nope don't do anything don't do anything just relinquish control that's all I want you to do is just relinquish control and walk in your faith just in your faith of whatever it is you you think is going to happen to you, I have so much better for you. And even though you can't see it right now, I just want you to just relax, like stop stressing out about things. And that's really what I'm doing because I feel like this thing about control really, if I think about it, is really an anxiety, power-driven, stressful situation. But today... And going back to just being outside and looking outside in the grass at my dogs and the, the other dogs that I'm dog sitting right now, I just relaxed and released because this past three weeks, I've been stressed out about losing someone. And at the end of the day, I can't control that. I can't control that he doesn't want to be in my life. I can't control that. I can't. And Although my brain was trying to, my brain was literally trying to figure out ways in which I could control it. But I had prayed on it. I had prayed on it and God had told me, do not reach out to this man. Let that man go. Let him be. Let him do what he wants to do. I have something better for you. And in that prayer, when I received that, and I received this early on, when I received that about this person, that was a hard part for me. But I was so convicted in what I had received that at the end of the day, it didn't matter to me. And maybe it's also my self-pride too. Like, I'm not about to chase anybody. Like, if you don't want to talk to me, that's fine. You're showing me who you are. And it shows me that you don't have the emotional maturity to actually talk through things, right? So even if I'm in the wrong, which I could have very well been, like, I'm not putting that past anything. If I was in the wrong for what occurred between us, then that's fine. But I feel like, in those situations, everyone's so quick to like just ghost or leave or like not confront the situation. And that's some stuff I used to do when I was a child. Not even a child. Let me not even say that. That's some stuff I used to do in my early 30s when I wasn't emotionally equipped to handle situations. I would run from them. I would kind of go into my cocoon and I would hope that the other person would be big enough to reach out to me or like big enough to come get me basically and pull me back in you know I was hoping the other person would just kind of show me like I meant something to them I guess in a way and I realized with my last previous situationship the guy that I wrote the book um no f boys about Hi, honey. One of my dogs has come in to see me. 
the one I wrote the book about, he actually taught me a lot about communication because one of the things I remember him saying to me is, I can't give you what you want if you don't ask me. And I remember that being so big for me because at the time I thought I wanted like exclusivity well actually we do have exclusivity I thought I wanted like this relationship with him but then when he said that to me I realized I did it it like it really made me pinpoint like what did I want to ask for and I realized then like oh okay like you're expecting these things from this person but you don't even know how to ask for them because you don't even know what you want it's ultimately what I got but anyway I don't know how we digressed on that. I was, I really wanted to make this podcast about being grateful. And I honestly, I'm grateful for this, for learning communication from that situation. But what I think ultimately what this is really showing me is that every relationship that I've been through is not without a reason. Even the ones that don't work out. Because I feel like a lot of us get it trapped in these spaces where something ends and we're stuck there like we're stuck on why didn't it work out and at the end of the day it's like it wasn't meant to some things just aren't meant to work out I knew that even going in with this guy something in my spirit was like this isn't gonna work out it just kept saying it's not gonna work out but when I prayed about it God said don't worry about that like literally when I prayed about it God was like be at peace with where you are now just let it ride out to whatever it's going to ride out to enjoy the moment now if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out I literally got that before this happened and then after it stopped working out I went into this panic anxiety stressed out mode like I didn't like I hadn't seen it coming I'd seen it coming I knew beforehand I was told beforehand it wasn't working going to work out And yet I acted surprised at the end when it did it. I knew I was mature enough to the point where I realized like he wasn't emotionally available to me. We weren't having those deep conversations. You know, the ones where you kind of really dig deep into someone and you know who they are. And I feel like the more you dig into someone, the more you really get to know them. We weren't having those conversations anymore. And I could tell something was off between us. Before I even went to go see him the last time, which was about three weeks ago, I was already like out the half one foot really out the door. This is going to be our last time. He's going to have to prove to me he's ready and we're going to have the conversations that we need to have or this is done. And then I acted surprised when I gave him the ultimatum and it was done and he chose, okay, cool. You want to leave me? Then fine. But I'm not going to lie. I have such a big heart. And this is actually what brought me to this, doing this podcast is I was giving my gratitude to myself in the mirror. And I want to just go ahead and finish that here. I want to finish it with you, me, you know. And I want just to tell you that you are blessed. No matter what circumstance you're in, you are blessed to be where you are right now. You are blessed to be able to wake up every day with two legs, two feet, two arms. You're blessed to go outside and be able to breathe. You're blessed to not have to worry about where is the money coming from to pay rent for next month. If nothing else, you have that stress-free worry to be able to breathe right now. You should be grateful to be in this space. You have beautiful children. Your children are amazing. They are amazing. They have kind hearts just like you. And can we talk about your heart? Because you have a beautiful heart. And just because you've given it to the wrong people doesn't mean, doesn't make it any less valuable. It doesn't make it any less loving. You are beautiful inside and out. And you put yourself down. I've watched you. I've watched you put yourself down more times than I can count. I've watched you. Tell yourself, oh, I'm ugly, or tell yourself, oh, I'm getting older. We're all getting older. Every day we're getting older. Every single second, every one of us is getting older. What are you going to do with the time you have now, sweetheart? What are you going to do with the time you have now? Love those wrinkles. Love that 
one or two, three, four, five gray hairs that you see poking out of your head all of a sudden. Love them. They're part of you. It, it means that you're alive. It means that you're here to see another day. You have to start living in your moment now. You have to stop thinking about other things. You have to stop trying to be in control of everything. You can't control everything. You really can't. You're going to have to learn how to take some deep breaths, girlfriend. You're going to have to learn how to like let some of that anxiety go, right? You're going to have to to bring safe people around you. You're going to have to start vetting some people, a lot of people actually. Not everyone can be in your circle. You're an empath. You're one of those people that when you love, you love hard. When you give, you give your all. And you can't do that with everybody. You have to be careful. You really do. And continue to communicate your feelings. Continue to tell people what you like and what you dislike. Continue to tell people that you love them because you're a loving person and you have so much to give. And it's not your fault that they can't handle what you give to them. Some people can be overwhelmed by all of your love, by all of your affection, by all of your kindness, by all of your good heartedness. Don't let that deter you from being who you are. You just haven't found your people. Your people are out there. It's up to you to find them. But don't dim your light just to make it into some room where your light's not even valued. Don't do that. If you're meant to shine on stages, you need to find a core group of people who are willing to shine on stages with you or at least applaud you while you're out there. But don't dim your life to try to fit in a closet with someone who's a recluse or an introvert or, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but you've been trying so hard to push your love onto people who aren't ready to accept that type of love. And you have to be okay with that too. You have to realize like not everybody's where you are. Not everybody's done the work that you've done, you know? You've done three years of therapy and after this last incident, you were like, you know what? I'm still working on myself. And I realized that I need to get back into therapy. And that's what I did. Who is he doing that? Is a person, is your husband doing that? Because that's what he should be doing if he's not already completely together. Now, my husband might already be completely together. He might not have any issues he might need to work on. He may have had a great childhood. You know, that's just not his thing. He's good where he is. And if that's the case, that's what I need. I need a secure person. I can't be with avoidance anymore. I can't be with secure people who pretend they're secure, but then they become avoidant. Like, I can't do that in my life anymore. I really do need someone who's secure. I am secure until someone becomes avoidant, and then I become anxious. And I know that is not healthy for me. And at the end of the day, I'm grateful to know where I am. I'm grateful to be able to look at myself and talk to myself and say to myself, you are better than your current circumstance. You are better than the person that you are currently trying to pull back into your life because we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're moving forward. We're moving on. We're not entertaining people who think that no communication is a form of communication because, yes, yes, everyone says, oh, yeah, there no silence is an answer. It is. But it's not it's not the type of answer that I want to be confronted with when I'm trying to have an open dialogue with someone. It's not the type of communication that I desire from my husband. I don't want to be stonewalled. I don't want to be silenced. I don't want to be given the silent treatment. I don't think it's humane, honestly, especially for someone that you call yourself caring for. And so I want to accept it. So the internet can say what they want to say about cutting people out of their lives, you know, protecting your peace, whatever. You're going to continue to stand true to what you believe in. And that's open communication. That's open dialogue with someone who is secure, with someone who knows what they want, and for someone who's not afraid to talk about it and tell you their feelings. And everyone else can go. They can go. Anyway, I guess that was my wrap up I basically talked to myself which I typically try like to do give myself advice at the end hopefully you too could take something away from it because I feel like a lot of times we're all going through the same things and 
if you can get something from what I say to myself, then Lord knows that I think the world could be a better place. But on that note, I'm going to let you go. Um, I think I will pick up the podcast that I started on ghosting, even though I touched on, on it a little bit today. And maybe this, maybe this will be the addition to the ghosting thing. I don't know. Maybe I'll pick it up and I think it it deserves its own. This, this podcast is really just about what I've been grateful for and realizing who I am and taking a moment to realize that you really can't control things. I think that's a big one. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. And let it go. Realize you can't control everything. How about that? I think that's a blessing in itself is realizing what you can and can't control. Just It allows for the stress to just leave. Oh, I've just been so uptight these past couple of weeks. But in knowing that I can't control it, the stress was coming from thinking I could control something I couldn't. And in just letting it be and realizing, yeah, I can't control it. Yeah, it wasn't for me. On that note, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Well, joining me. <laughs> joining me for another episode of Hello Me, It's Me. I appreciate you being here. I really do. And uh, again, this is my little diary to myself. So even if you weren't here, it would just be me and me. Okay? So anyway, until next week, guys, I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of hello me it's me with nikki d lovely just remember you can't change who you were yesterday but you can always learn and grow to become a better version of yourself today so make sure you do the mental work today for the future you tomorrow and i will see you next week and in the meantime make sure that you check me out on my instagram at nikki d lovely or one underscore broke underscore mama you can also find me at NikkiDLovely.com and check out my book, No F Boys Allowed. I also have a poetry book coming out pretty soon, so just a little shameless plug. But either way, I will see you guys next time, and thanks again. Bye.